You've heard of prompts when it comes to AI. You've heard of prompt engineering. Have you heard about context engineering? That's what we're here to talk about today. And these are just one of many topics that we cover in our AI Explainer series. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notify bell to know every time our episodes drop once every week. My name is Meena Ganesh. I'm here with our CTO, Ben Kuz, and let's get right into it. Ben, let's start with the basics. What is context engineering? Yeah, so context engineering is really the discipline by which you assemble information and tools to have an AI agent be able to then perform a complex task. Okay. So it's basically like the art of and the science of programming your agents. Taking a quick step back, um, so uh, you mentioned prompt engineering. This is, in the old days, this is kind of what we used to say. You um, mean like last week? Yeah. In the old, old days, old with AI the pace days, that AI yeah. moves yeah, yeah, at this point. Exactly. So um, in the old days, like kind of like a few months ago, like last yes. year kind of style, um, you typically, to get the agent to, or to get the AI models to do what you want, you'd prompt them. You'd give them uh, this kind of thing of like, you know, you're a helpful agent whose job is to do this. Um, you give them examples. It's like single shot or multi-shot kind of Guardrails, here's what not to do. Yeah, give them yeah. a couple, couple of instructions. Yeah. And then you spent a lot of time sort of um, tweaking this idea of, these set of instructions. And it was it was um, something that pe some people got good at. Um, people developed these prompt engineering techniques. But now, um, but that, that was kind of in the days of when you were kind of dealing with this like single shot, getting a single answer out of an, of an, an AI model. But when we're thinking about the world of AI agents, which are characterized by doing more complex things, often doing multiple iterations, sometimes working in these like multi-agent systems, you end up needing to have the agents get a lot of information in order to do their job. And so they need more context. And so we call this the emerging trend now, um, popularized by some people like Andres Kaparthi, is to call it context engineering because it's actually tremendously harder than sort of the basics of prompt engineering. But if I am just tweaking my prompt or if I'm just tweaking the custom instructions, yeah. that's, that's basically the same thing, right? I'm giving AI, like the more tries I give it, I'm giving AI like more context, like, hey, actually what I was looking for was yeah. this other thing. So amend your, you know, and put it in a table. Yeah. The that is prompt. It is. Isn't the, it the, same the thing? essence of prompt engineering is part of context engineering, but it's way more complex than that. Okay. So, so let's 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 walk through an example. We've talked previously about um, like research agents. Okay. So um, and then we'll do this example where um, so my job will be the context engineer and then you will be the AI agent in this example. Okay. okay. So in this AI agent, you're, you're intelligent. You've, you've read all the different stuff. You've gone through school. Okay. So you come here, and then let's say that in this case, you're doing research, and then we'll use an example from an enterprise. Like imagine where you're a financial company. Mm -hmm. You're an analyst, and you're going to do work on uh, analyzing a company. So in this example, we would say, somebody would come to you, and they would say, can you help me analyze this company? Okay, so imagine me as a contact engineer, set you down here, you stay here, answer the question. Okay, so maybe they're asking about a new company. Maybe it's a private company. Maybe it's one that nobody's ever seen before. So answer the question. I would need context. You would need context. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, and then, and in particular, I would have to say um, either I'd have to provide you with information, or I'd have to give you tools on what to provide. Mm -hmm. So, there's a serious problem that you just hit right now, which is that um, you, even though you're intelligent, even though you're the, maybe the smartest person who has ever been in this area, like you would still need context to answer a, a, a question like that. In particular, when it came with, in some cases, proprietary information or information that's only available in a company. So, giving you not enough information, and frankly, I didn't even give you any instructions. I didn't tell you. Uh, what you're supposed to do. I, I didn't tell you objective very much. I didn't tell you. Right. I only passed on just a bit of the of the query. Um, and so I, I didn't even give you anywhere to work. I didn't give you a scratch pad to take notes or anything like that. So all of this, if I if I was a context engineer in this in this case, I would have done a very poor job. Um, now, that's the that's the the challenge of not giving enough information. But then there's another challenge, which is imagine if I said, so here's a question about a company that you need to analyze. Here are 35 books on it. Here's access to 45 different databases of information. And um, here's uh, 7,000 different examples of, of things in the past that people have done uh, on this area. And I'd say, I need you to answer this. And I want you to do it fairly quickly. Like um, AI agents kind of work about 100 times faster than, than people per sort of like for kind of like typing in how they think. So um, I need an answer in about, let's say, uh, 30 seconds. So I'll give you, you know, 30 minutes uh, uh, in that ballpark of range. Uh, and so can you do that? I would still want to know what of the information that you gave me. Yeah. How much of it I probably don't even need. Yeah. You, in order to answer the question, it's right. almost too much information at that point. Yeah. Every model has an, a context window, mm -hmm. and they can only handle so much information. And so we've talked in previous episodes about the idea of doing um, retrieval augmented generation. 
And so that that is part of this also is to be able to provide to you the knowledge that you need. So when we're talking about context, we're typically talking about things like knowledge and, and then often using RAG um, to be able to get that knowledge. We're talking about the idea of your instruction set that you need to be able to do this with your objective. And we're talking about tools. And to the example, like if I gave you 45 databases of different things to go look through, or if I gave you a whole bunch of content, you might say, well, I'm going to go look through them. But if those didn't have the information you're looking for, then you're going to waste a ton of time. And, right. Or you're going to look up, find something that's not quite relevant and then think it's relevant because I confused you by giving you yeah. too much. And, you didn't tell me what the tools were for yeah. or what I should look for yeah. using those tools. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and AI, um, many, many iterations of AI today has this challenge of if you give it too many tools, but like, almost like a person, it gets confused and sometimes uses them when it really doesn't need to. If I said that you had a team of other agents to work with, you're going to also need to like, you know, pass around notes and pass around things to talk to. So th this, is, this whole thing is the art of, of context engineering. So Ben... How is this different from, you know, the combination of giving really great, really well thought of custom instructions to an agent alongside really well crafted prompts that, you know, an agent would have to take it all into account? Like, why do we call it context engineering? What is yeah. the engineering portion of this? Yeah. OK, so for an example like this, this research uh, agent. Um, so this turns out to be like really hard and complex to get to work well. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, uh, like the way that the, normally the first step of research is to actually search for data that you might need. Mm -hmm. And so there's this question, like how long you search for? How many queries do you do? Uh, how many results should you look at? Like, and, and remember, time is typically part of this and you want it to actually perform well. So should I say, just keep going in forever, just keep researching, and then you just, anytime you find something interesting, keep going? Or do I say that, like, I want you to look through about a few hundred results, kind of, and, the, and then, and then uh, be able to, to get the gist of it? Um, when do you go back and ask for more clarification from a user? This is a, a, a question that comes up in context engineering. And then when you go through and you basically look through things, like, do you need to create an outline? If you create an outline, should you then just go like automatically fill it in? Do you need to go research again based on this outline? Then when you're done and you have like a, like an, an idea of the way that it works and you fill in the pros, should you bother to have another agent critique you? If you get that crit critique, then should you rewrite it from scratch? When do you go back and do more research? All of these kind of questions are what we would typically handle as something you would call context engineering. So it's actually a lot more of, of something that's programmatic in nature yeah. and not necessarily something that... An, an air specialist or an admin at a company who is giving custom instructions to an agent. Yeah. That's that's not necessarily what they might do. So is this something that is typically taken care of by model providers, like the, the open AIs and, and the anthropics of the world? And, and, you know, for enterprises, it doesn't really, like, come into play? Well, uh, many companies that provide these kind of capabilities where you're sort of chatting with an agent or talking to it or having the agent do these activities, they're typically doing this idea of context engineering in the background. So they're basically instructing the agent that when they get certain types of questions, one of the first things that, it, that, that context engineering does is to figure out what does a person want mm -hmm. and, then, and then sometimes issue off commands to other little sub-agents or processes to go off and do those kind of things. And in general, like one of the ways that you know if, if you have good context engineering or bad context engineering is whether or not you're getting what you're looking for from your agent. Because oftentimes mm -hmm. one of the, the challenges with like these AI models, uh, and especially in enterprise class use cases, if they don't give you what you want, sometimes it's not because the agent's not smart. It doesn't need to get the new model or the best model or whatever. It's because it doesn't have the data that it's needed or it hasn't been instructed or engineered well to answer that question. So context engineering is not just the programmatic components of giving the agent instructions yeah. on how many queries to run, when to touch base with the user, when to ask for feedback. It's also the combination of like the custom instructions, the actual prompt that the user gives. But then isn't the onus on the user using this agent to figure out, wait, where did I go wrong? Yes. And, like, how will they even know that? Oh, it's not me. <laughs> it's the agent's context engineering that's the problem, well, you know. Typically, that um, uh, for many new systems like like for Box, we have these agents that are that are like they have tasks. They're mm -hmm. they have, remember when we talked about AI agents. Many agents yeah. have an objective. Yeah, and so the the agent needs to be designed in a way, in context engineering, in a way that it, it is able to get the information it needs or get it or ask the user to get it. 
and to be set up in a way in the, in the platform so that it's able to have access to those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So typically, um, you'll know because the agent will, um, again, whether or not it gives you a good example for a subjective, if we were doing uh, research and you get a bad set of research, then again, oftentimes it means that it maybe was not uh, context engineered properly. Mm -hmm. And and, and is, is in, in, in the world that we're in now with this kind of emergence of, of AI agents continuing to get better, models continue to get better, um, the techniques are continuing to get better, you see an evolution where um, uh, many companies um, are working on making their agents more and more sophisticated using the sort of practices of context engineering. So is context engineering something that enterprises or companies who are looking to leverage AI care about? Or is this really only a concern for you know, players who are providing the AI services in, in the space? Really, anybody who's like building AI agents needs to worry about context engineering. But okay. there's many levels to this because um, in many cases, just like um, with people, where sometimes the output of a, of a person or of a team turns into an input of somebody else, in many cases, um, companies who are using AI agents themselves, who are, are, are making their own agents to then utilize different tools, sometimes those tools are actually other agents, would then be able to then, uh, they need to worry about context engineering for their internal agents. As an example, imagine this uh, a financial um, company was doing um, an analysis and they wanted to not only do research on, on, a, on a company, but then also take that and then prepare a presentation for their internal team. They have their own internal format. They have their own other sort of custom databases that they go into. So they might ask Box to research all of their unstructured data, all the content that they collected about this company, and then they would use that to then create these new artifacts. And so their agent would call the research agent mm -hmm. who's been context engineered. And then their system, would, their agent would be context engineered to take that as an input and then be able to then provide more uh, exactly what they wanted internal in the company. So this is common where agents basically are calling other agents. And, and, um, and at Box, we believe very much in this idea of an AI agentic ecosystem where all these different platforms provide their capabilities either as tools, like an MCP server context sense, or as agent-to-agent -agent capabilities. And, and it's very common uh, as platforms to have companies build with, you know, in the same way that they have IT um, engineers uh, or developers and companies that build special uh, software applications for them internally, they'll build custom agents internally that will then call upon these platforms to be able to provide these kind of capabilities. So it sounds like context engineering is a really, really important part for uh, businesses realizing the true value of, of AI and getting the most of it, right? Does that mean that we now give less importance to prompt engineering? Like maybe, you know, if these agents are configured and programmed so well enough, it almost doesn't matter what I ask it. Like, it's going to give me a great answer. Uh, I think in every, like, human-to-human -human activity, there's often this, this idea that uh, communication is critical. Um, and I think this is one of the sort of uh, the essence of prompting an agent is to actually communicate with it. You're talking to the agent. Mm -hmm. And so in all cases, you can actually give poor instructions to almost any agent, and it will not do what you want because you didn't give it any chance to. You did not communicate with it appropriately. Even though it's context engineered yeah. really well. Yeah. Like, uh, and, and it's been given all these yeah. instructions, how many queries yeah. to ask, what files to if, look if for. If you're a research agent and I and I come to you and I say, do me research on this uh, company, and you go off and do it, you come back with the research, and I say, that's not what I meant. I wanted you to, to, to look at like you know uh, the X, Y, and Z that, that um, tell me about mm. his competitors, tell me about uh, other things. Yes. And, and you're like, I, I didn't know that. That's not what I normally do. You didn't even tell me that. And that would be, so this is an essence of being able to communicate with the agents, which we often call prompting it or yeah. querying it. Yeah. Okay. So revising the prompts and iterating on the prompts is also distinctly different from this concept of context engineering, yeah. which is a more uh, of a programmatic essence that, that we put in into AI agents. Helping the agent achieve its task by giving it the right information. Correct. So Ben, for our viewers tuning in today, what's the TLDR when it comes to context engineering? TLDR is that uh, if you're going to get good outcomes out of your agents, especially the more complex they get, you're going to need to apply the context engineering principles so that you're able to get your agents to do what you want. Very insightful. Thanks, Ben. And that was it for this episode of AI Explainer series. Tell us in the comments what you think of context engineering. See you next time.